On Tech News Today, Target wasn't the only target. Crime does pay for iPhone thieves. And can surveillance drones keep students from cheating on tests? Coming up. This is Twit. Bandwidth for Tech News Today is provided by CashFly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. Monday, January 13th, 2014, and this is Tech News Today. Tech News Today is brought to you by Gazelle, the fast and simple way to sell your used gadgets. Find out what your used iPhone, iPad, and other Apple products are worth at gazelle.com. And by Squarespace, the all-in-one platform that makes it fast and easy to create your own professional website or online portfolio. For a free two-week trial and 10% off, go to squarespace.com and use the offer code TNT1. Welcome to Tech News Today. I'm Mike Gelgen. I'm Sarah Lane. And I'm Jason Howell. Tech News Today delivers the top tech news in 30 minutes or less. Sarah, did you enjoy the Golden Globes? Yeah, and I lost a lot of followers on Twitter because of it. Because I went a little spamming insane. Spamming them with uh, I wouldn't call it spamming. I would call it enthusiasm online. And sometimes it happens. Mm -hmm. And that's what I did last night. Hey, you it know, was, it, was, it, was a fun, it was a fun time. I enjoyed it. If they don't like what you like, they shouldn't, maybe they shouldn't follow you. I followed the <laughs> whole thing on, on social media. I didn't actually watch the thing. Whenever somebody tweeted some outrageous moment and put a link to the video, I just went and watched it there. It was, it was pretty trivially easy and it was actually a lot of fun. And in fact, Aereo had an unfortunate outage for an I hour about that. in New York City, which is pretty bad. And the other tech angle uh, from the show was that uh, Netflix won a Golden Globe. Uh, the uh, Robin Wright won Best Actress for House of Cards. Yeah, and she's very good. Yeah, yeah very deserving, deserving of that. Right, yeah. but uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's it's uh, Netflix original. Good yep. work. Yep, excellent work. Well, let's get to the news. Reuters says five U.S. retailers, not just Target, were hacked and customer information stolen over the holiday shopping season. The other stores were Neiman Marcus plus three more that haven't been identified. Target chairman and CEO Greg Steinhoffel confirmed yesterday that the attack involved point-of-sale malware. What is that? That's actually malicious code at the cash register level. Reuters sources said the hack involved malware called a RAM scraper, which that's the new phrase of the, of the week, which grabs encrypted data as it passes through computer memory. The United States Computer Emergency Readiness Team, which is part of the Department of Homeland Security, warned retailers on January 2nd, of malware targeting point of sale systems. In related news, nobody seems to be able to pin down exactly how many consumers have been affected by the Target breach. Target first reported 40 million people affected, then it went up to 70 million. So some news organizations such as Reuters are saying 70 is the new total. Others like CNN are adding the numbers together and reporting a total of 110 million customers affected. TNT has contacted Target to clarify what exactly we should report, but the company hasn't responded. An airline executive may have revealed a secret Google project over the weekend. The CEO of the discount Irish airline Ryanair, Michael O'Leary, said in an interview with the Irish independent newspaper that very exciting developments with Google, described as a, quote, price comparison thing, would change the way people buy tickets forever. He said the new Google service would go live by the end of March and be 100% advertiser supported. PayPal is making the online checkout process a little bit more simple. It used to be that the system would force you as a shopper to switch to the PayPal website to complete a transaction. Now, an in-context checkout system keeps them on the merchant site. PayPal says the new system will be widely available by summer and promises to provide the same checkout process no matter what device you're using. You can use a credit card or even PayPal's Bill Me Later offering. Windows 8 is failing. So Microsoft is planning a Windows 9 release in April of 2015. At least that's according to a report on Paul Thorat's Supersite for Windows. According to The Post, Microsoft's next major upgrade for Windows, which is codenamed Threshold, and is the version that will bring back the start menu, will be called Windows 9 to, quote, quote, distance itself from the Windows 8 debacle, according to Thorat. Here's a head scratcher. The independent dance music label Spinnin' Records asked Google recently to remove links to its own Twitter feed. The label sent takedown requests to Google to remove link to not only its own Twitter account, but some of the Twitter accounts of several of the label's top artists, according to a discovery made by the blog Torrent Freak. The requests were made on behalf of the label by a service that looks for pirate links and requests takedowns for a fee. 
So probably an accident here. Fortunately, Google ignored the requests. Maxis announced this morning that SimCity is getting an offline mode. The upcoming up update 10 will include a new single-player mode for offline play. Maxis was criticized last spring when users discovered that playing in single-player modes still required an online check-in. New York City crime is down. All right. But iPhone thefts are way, way up. Ooh. According to the New York Police Department, nearly one out of every five cases of grand larceny involves an Apple product. And some 8,000 iPads and iPhones were reported stolen in New York City last year. We're going to talk in a minute about uh, BlackBerry's plan to come back. And before we come back for that, let's hear from our sponsor today, which is Gazelle. This episode of Tech News Today is brought to you by Gazelle because this is an awesome company that will solve many of your problems. You've got uh, old devices lying around, we all do, uh, in a drawer, in a box, or somewhere, and Gazelle will take them off your hands and pay you to solve that problem. If you're thinking about getting a new device, this is a great way to fund that purchase. Gazelle wants to buy your used iPhone or iPad and you can even lock in the price. So you go there and find out how much your device is worth. And when you find out the price, that's the price. It's good for 30 days. So just go to gazelle.com. That's G-A-Z-E-L-L-E.com. Enter in your item and find out how much Gazelle will pay you. They'll even buy broken iPhones and iPads, believe it or not. And they'll give you a risk-free offer and even free shipping. You'll then get paid by check, PayPal, or the best option is if you get an Amazon gift card, they'll pay you 5% more. Payment is fast and, and, and easy. Offers are good for 30 days. They'll even wipe your data. It's a, probably a good idea for you to delete all the information on your devices. But if you forget, uh, Gazelle will go ahead and wipe it for you in a very uh, complete and professional uh, way. They've paid more than $100 million to more than 700,000 happy customers. Most items items even qualify for a free box. So just an example of how much they'll pay, an old iPhone 4S, which I think is two generations back, a 64 gig, gig version from Verizon, looked it up this morning, they'll give you $110 for that old phone. An iPad mini with Wi-Fi with 32 gigs of, of, of storage, $185 for that old uh, tablet. So this is a fantastic service. I'm often surprised, I'm almost always surprised by how much they actually pay for old devices. So we thank Gazelle for their support of Tech News Today. So go find out what your iPhone is worth. Take a minute, go to gazelle.com and find out. Do it now because your iPhone may lose value the longer you wait. So Sarah, what yes. is BlackBerry's big plan for the future of smartphones? Well, okay, so the Z10 and the Z30 are good examples of BlackBerry kind of going the the, the trend of smartphones where you don't have physical keyboards anymore. Sure. It's, the, it's, the, it's the software version, nice flat screen. And that was a controversial move, really, because it's like, well, well, this was RIM back at the time that, 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 that these handsets were announced. But one thing that BlackBerry always did that made it stand out was its phones looked different. Yeah. Physical keyboards were something that people didn't want to give up necessarily, um, particularly in the enterprise. John Chen, who's the CEO, says uh, to Bloomberg that the company's next phones will mostly feature hardware keyboards. He says, I personally love the keyboards, so you will look to BlackBerry going forward to do keyboards. I wouldn't use the word exclusively, but predominantly. He also says that uh, the company wants to retarget um, corporate enterprises, government customers. Both have lost ground to particularly iOS, but Android as well in some mm -hmm. cases. With future devices, he says it's a demo that still values faster, more tactile typing experiences, which, again, a lot of people do say physical keyboard can't be beat. It just feels somehow dated. Yeah. I mean, BlackBerry really hasn't had a lot of success with any of its ideas over the last couple of years. That's right. So... Maybe this is maybe this is the way to go. I think it's brilliant. I think there's a, probably a majority of people want a touch device like an iPhone or your typical Android device. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't know what the majority is. Maybe it's 70, 80 percent, maybe 90 percent. But if BlackBerry can get the 10 percent that wants a physical keyboard, they win because that's a huge number of people. And they're so good at it. The, the BlackBerry keyboards have always been so fantastic. That's kind of an area of specialty for them. They've got a lot of patents around keyboards. I think it's a, a fantastic move to just be proudly physical in, when it comes to keyboards. And I think they can really, um, you know, make a lot of headway with that strategy. So um, 
the former Acu Apple executive and longtime industry luminary Jean-Louis Gasset, Gasset blogged this morning that the Internet of Things, this coming sort of world where your toaster and your bed and your lamp and everything has Internet connectivity, and which we saw at CES in a very, very big way, is pretty much dead in the water uh, unless something changes. And the reason he says that is that if you look at the television uh, industry, um, everybody has what he calls the basket of remotes problem. Mm -hmm. Even tech, yeah, even technical enthusiasts just never really use the features of their remotes. They throw it in a basket and they don't really program them, and it's a big problem. You say you do that as well. Well, it's not that I don't feel like I understand how my remotes work, sure. but they, I have like four of them that I use regularly. Yeah. Well, uh, his example in his blog post talked about an engineer, a very technical person who is perfectly capable of you know, thoroughly programming all the remotes and handling it. He said, you know what? I work hard all day. I'm solving problems all day. I don't need to come home and have a big problem with my TV with all these remotes. So I just ignore it and I don't do it. And I don't personally know very many people who really do all the things that the remotes are supposed to do, who program it in or who get a single remote and have it, everything working off that same remote using all the features. People don't use it. And he's saying this is a look into the future of the Internet of Things. Because Maybe he should talk to Mr. Wolfram. Remember we talked about that yeah, last week? It's, I mean, right. the, the solution isn't necessarily just a bunch of physical remotes. I mean, right now, if right. you don't have a Harmony remote, say, that is really good with uh, a variety of different devices, uh, and I know that, that that is a good one, even though for some reason I've never decided to, to buy it, that's not necessarily just our only option. Oh, the smarter my toaster gets, the more I'm going to have to have a basket of remotes. I mean, I think that that's a little... That's a... That's not forward thinking enough. Right. What he's saying, what he's calling for is for the industry to, to, to get it right this time and to essentially uh, gather around standards where devices can broadcast their capabilities and communicate with other devices. In other words, if you leave it up to the consumer to program the devices and to uh, uh, have the settings work and, and, and leave it up to the consumer to make things work together, they're not going to work together. It's never going to work, and we're going to have another situation where um, features are just completely. I already see it with the with the uh, the Nest thermostat. Mm -hmm. People start to use it. They're excited about it, and then after a while, they kind of wander away, and they're not that excited after a while. Well, it, I mean, once you conquer the Nest, I mean, how much is there to really like think about? Sure, right. <laughs> you just want it to feel comfortable in your home, right. so. You know, in a way, it's like there's, I guess there's a bit of a learning curve with some of these new devices. But again, we're in early days. Dead in the water, I think that that's, that's, that's a little much. Yeah. Well, um, NBC is up to something. They've, they're partnering with somebody. And what are they up to? Yeah, NBC Universal News Group, which is a unit of Comcast, is entering into a partnership with Now This News. Now This is all, actually all one word. Um now, if you haven't heard of it, it's a startup that makes news segments that are very short form, as in six seconds, something that you could play on on Vine or Instagram or even Snapchat. The videos are also stored on Now This News' mobile apps as well. What's interesting is that, okay, you say, well, what is the partnership exactly? We don't know what money changed hands, but we do know that NBC Universal now has about 10% of Now This News. Now This News journalists will now have access to a certain number of NBC producers. They'll have uh, access to archival footage that NBC has, which is huge. That's actually, you know, something you'd have to pay a lot of money for otherwise. And then NBC has the right to use Now This News videos on its various shows and networks. This is, it's interesting because more and more as we go forward, we, we see these stories one after another of networks saying, we have to figure out how to make use of all of this content that's being generated and crowdsourced on social media so that people don't consider it, do I turn on NBC or do I just read Twitter for the news? NBC sure. gets to use all of that so people kind of think of it as all one big thing. And I think that that's important for uh, not just NBC, but, but regular networks. But then I wonder, you know, then it becomes a, a, a matter of, well, we just want to buy this crowdsourced mm -hmm. content so that it can't be run on another network. Sure. That, that's a that's a good point, and maybe this is how they're competing against the sort of quick and dirty social media driven uh, content out there. On the one hand, I think it's brilliant. After you know the Golden Globes yesterday, where every time something outrageous happened or somebody was drunk or something uh, interesting uh, happened, uh, you'd see these clips going out, little tiny clips, very short, 
And, you know, a lot of people were clicking on them, getting a lot of mind share, and it's a way for them to be a kind of gateway drug into, you know, longer content, uh, you know, still TV-type content. On the other hand, you know, I wonder if it's a kind of dumbing down of NBC journalism. Uh, you know, they, they're supposed to be in the business of doing real news uh, broadcasts and, and, and having, you know, uh, something that at least lasts more than a few seconds, and now they're sort of getting into this, kind of uh, Vine, Snapchat kind of content where it's very, very short, almost content-free, really. But you could argue that it's not, you know, long form doesn't necessarily mean more real, right? I mean, right. this is just that people have a lot of options. We're consuming shorter stuff. And it doesn't mean that you can't rethink the way that you explain what happened out there. Maybe you can do it in 10 seconds or two minutes. I think that's sort of where they say that their uh, their news stories max out at. It's, it's short form stuff. Yeah. Look at YouTube. I mean, <laughs> there are a lot of short form yeah. things that do very well because that's just what people are getting used to. And if you want to sell advertising, think sure. about what people want. Absolutely. And it has to be said that now this news is very good. They, their content is, the way they do it is very, very good. It's not like Vine or a lot of the things, you, a lot of the short form things that are done by amateurs out there. It's very professionally done. And I think um, it's, it's a, probably a good move for NBC Universal. Well, we're going to tell you about drone warfare in the classroom. Yeah, you heard that right in just a second. But first, uh, I want to tell you about my friends at Squarespace. Uh, this episode is also brought to you by Squarespace, which is the all-in-one platform that makes it easy to create your own professional website or online portfolio. I have been a very happy Squarespace user for quite a while. and I love Squarespace. The reason I love them so much is that they make me look really good. Uh, you just go there. It's, it's very easy to use. You just log in. You can create a website from scratch in a very small amount of time. And it's almost impossible to create a website that isn't beautiful. They have more than 20 new uh, templates for you to start with. And once you have a template, you can tweak it and customize it, change the colors, change everything about it with very simple and easy to use controls. If you're, if you're a developer, you can go in there and do a lot more extensive uh, controls uh, changes as well, but it makes you look like a design genius, and then it makes you look like an engineering genius because Squarespace sites essentially can't be brought down. They they throw all the resources necessary at the site when they're being hit with a lot of traffic. So if your blog suddenly has the viral hit of the week and uh, gets uh, slash dotted and it gets uh, on the on the front page of uh, some of the other blogs and you get a gazillion uh, people coming at this thing, it's not going to go down. It's just going to rally its resources and survive that uh, huge uh, traffic uh, rush. Uh, their support is open 20, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, and it starts at only $8 a month. I mean, this is really inexpensive, and, in, and that includes a free domain name. Um, you can go in there and prototype sites. You can just create one site after another and until you get a look and feel that you really like. It's mobile ready. This is one of the coolest things I like about Squarespace, which is that it shows your website in on phones, on tablets, and on laptops in a in a native mode. So it looks fantastic. It looks like it was designed, and it was designed, in fact, specifically for phones, for example, when you're looking at the phone version. They have a new Squarespace metric app that allows you to check st stats and page views, unique visitors, and social media followers, that follows, that kind of thing. You can you know, just do that from your phone which is really, really cool. When you're out and about, you can check up on your site and see how it's doing. Squarespace, of course, takes care of the hosting, so you don't have to deal with any of that stuff. So we thank uh, Squarespace for sponsoring Tech News Today, and uh, you can s support both Squarespace and Tech News Today uh, and start a free two-week trial with no credit card required and start building your website today, right away. When you decide to sign up for Squarespace, make sure you use the offer code TNT1. The one is for the month of January. And you'll get 10% off. You'll also, by doing that, you'll show your support for Tech News Today. And we thank Squarespace for their support. Squarespace is everything you need to create an exceptional website. Well, Sarah, yes. drone warfare comes to the classroom. Oh, great. That sounds awesome. A Belgian school appears to be using drones to stop cheating on tests. The apparent claim was appear, appeared on YouTube, and the story was picked up by the UK tabloid The Mirror, which doesn't <laughs> mean that it's necessarily 
reliable. It's a tabloid. According to the story, Thomas More College teachers in Belgium are testing a sub $500 consumer drone called the DJI Phantom with an attached GoPro camera to fly over the heads of students taking tests to make sure they don't <laughs> cheat. This is either a hoax or it's the dumbest idea ever conceived. How do you expect students to be able to focus on the on their exam if what they hear around them is Exactly. Or after 15 minutes when the drone's batteries die, when the thing lands on their head and the right. propellers are still spinning, uh, that will make it further more difficult for them to concentrate. Uh, but, you know, th this is obviously dangerous. It's a distraction. It's a horrible idea. So I think we're being punked. Do you? I do. I think this is going to turn out to be know. Hoax. There's video footage. The, the, pr so, the proof is right there. It must be true. Right, yeah. This is real. <laughs> well, the drone's getting really close to those those. Those. The thing is, too, is is then then what? I mean, what is the drone looking for, and how is it going to communicate to the exactly. teacher? It's like, meh, meh, it's a cheater. Exactly. Like, how do you know? Exactly. All, it's like, <laughs> that's difficult to figure out. Um, yeah, all right. Marilyn McKenna, uh, who is the wife of former Washington State Attorney General Rob McKenna, posted an image of her fitting both of her legs inside a leg of old pants. Now, why would she do that? Well, she lost over 100 pounds. She was excited about it. It was very dramatic. And she says that she was told by Facebook to remove the picture because it was promoting idealized physical appearances. I did not realize you could not do things like this. A representative from Facebook told Como News, though, that this post is considered an ad as well because Ms. McKenna was attempting to boost the post. You can do that. You can pay for that to kind of like have it float up to the top of a news feed. And Facebook says boosted posts are like ads and we can't have you promoting anything in an ad. Ms. McKenna says, but I'm not selling anything. So what am I promoting besides the fact that I'm proud of myself? I don't it's know. It's outrageous. You that's know, a, that's a, this is an odd story. It seems to me that I've seen a lot of Facebook ads that are promoting idealized physical appearances. Yeah. <laughs> very aggressively, actually. Right. And so that seems like a completely bizarre thing. It's yeah. I, I mean, you you look into some of these terms and you know the things like um, posting like numbers on a weight scale and mm -hmm. stuff like that. I mean, it's I, I didn't realize that it was it, that, that that was actually part of the TOS, but it's, be careful next time you lose weight and you want to gloat. It's totally bizarre. And I'm predicting that Facebook's going to be back with an apology about this one. One would say they yeah. do that a lot. They they do weird things and then they apologize and move on. So that's the Facebook way. Well, that's our show today. Um, make sure you send your news tips, leaks, inside information and feedback. Email us at tnt at twit.tv or call 260-TNT-SHOW and leave us a message. Also, upvote the stories you'd like us to see us cover on our subreddit at technewstoday.reddit.com and visit our Tech News Today Google Plus community where we're having a good time. You'll also find our website at twit.tv slash tnt. And don't forget to check out our brand new evening news show called Tech News Tonight. The show starts tonight. The very first issue is tonight. And, and then it continues every weeknight at 4 p.m. Pacific. So don't miss Tech News tonight. Thank you for joining us. We'll see you tomorrow.